Okay, endocrine, right? Cell, organ, functions of the body, all influenced by our hormones. Remember I said, think of hormones as kind of like our snail mail, right? Versus the neurological sim uh, signals, which is electricity, right? Email, instantaneous, okay? And there's all sorts of endocrine disorders and there's all sorts of signs and symptoms depending on that disorder. We are not gonna go into that much depth. We are gonna go into depth about one endocrine disorder in particular, diabetes, okay? Diabetes. Uh, hematologic emergencies, we'll talk about those. They can be difficult to assess and treat and you're gonna need to get a good history to, get, to fully treat these. Okay, so the endocrine system, a communication system that controls functions inside of the body using hormones. Okay, chemicals. So glands, right? If we think of our thyroid gland, the one that sits behind our thyroid cartilage, right? Sends out different messenger hormones to the body. <clears throat> hormones affect organs, tissues, or cells, depending, and then endocrine disorders are caused by an internal communication problem. You guys may have, I like for example have family, but you guys may have family who have an overactive or an underactive thyroid, right? So they have to take medication to help with that hormone balance there. Um, Endocrine problems, when we think communication, because hormones are the snail mail of the world, right? Something happened while the letter's in transit. Okay, so glucose metabolism. Every cell, I think it says brain right there. The brain needs glucose and oxygen, but every cell, every organ, every tissue in our body needs oxygen and glucose, okay? And then by extension, every cell and organ and organ system in the body is going to need insulin. Right, because insulin is going to level out our glucose um, levels. Level, level, level. Okay, and then without enough insulin, cells do not get fed. Okay, we need to have um, proper amounts of hormones so we can take care of the amount of sugar that we have. We have too much sugar, not enough organs, or excuse me, not enough sugar is going to be spread to the body. Okay. We have too much insulin, or excuse me, not enough insulin, we're gonna get too much sugar, okay? And there's too much sugar, there's only so much that the cells can take. All right, so glucose metabolism. The pancreas produces and stores glucagon and insulin. What did I say, I told you guys to write it down, was that glucose stores in the liver? What did I say that was called? Glycogen. Glycogen, Glycogen plays a role with glucagon, okay? So the pancreas makes glucagon and insulin. The liver holds glycogen, okay? And we'll talk about why that's important in a moment. Now, in the pancreas, there's what are called alpha and beta cells. There's two different types of cells. Don't get them confused with alpha and beta adrenergic, right? Beta one, beta two, and alpha. Don't get those, they're totally different, okay? But there are, there are beta and alpha cells. Alpha cells produce glucagon, Beta cells produce insulin, and both of them live in the islets of Langerhans. I had a student who was British in my last accelerated class, and I made him say that in front of everybody. So he's, he pronounced it way better than I did. But islets of Langerhans, Hans, whatever you want to call it. Glucagon, insulin. Alpha is glucagon, beta is insulin. Okay, so diabetes mellitus, DM. It's not gonna, or it's very common if you guys look at someone's like history sheet, if you look at their face sheet, it'll say DM1 or DM2. It stands for diabetes mellitus type one or diabetes mellitus type two. Okay, so diabetes mellitus, DM, I'm just gonna refer to it as diabetes moving forward. Diabetes impairs our body's ability to use glucose for fuel, okay? It starts playing roles with the, the insulin. Now, if they do not get treatment, if they're diabetic, excuse me, and their sugar continues to climb, they can have uh, real issues, okay? If their sugar gets too high, things, some symptoms that you can see include blindness, heart disease, and kidney failure. Okay, and we'll talk about how those play a role as we move forward. So you're gonna to need to know the signs of what high blood sugar looks like and what low blood sugar looks like. What is the, the vital sign we get? Blood glucose, we gotta get a BG for these people, right? We gotta know what their blood glucose levels are. Hyperglycemia, it's too much sugar. Hypoglycemia 
is not enough sugar. And both of these will play a role in both type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Okay. All hypoglycemic patients require prompt treatment. We have to treat low blood sugar. What do we use to treat low blood sugar? What is our dose? 15 to 45 what? How? Per oral. Very good. We have to correct low blood sugar when we see it because every cell in our body, including our brain, needs that sugar. And if you do not get that sugar to the brain, those cells will start to die. Okay. So DM1, autoimmune disorder where the immune system produces antibodies against pancreatic beta cells. Okay, so the way I want you guys to think about sugar and how it interacts, and this will play a role when we start talking about the differences between type 1 and type 2, okay? This is a cell. Boop, boop. That's a cell. And then on our cell, we have these little doors, okay? This is turning out pretty good. I'm artist artistic today. Say, no, I would <laughs> never say that. Okay, right, and these are our little doors. There's a little keyhole on each one imaginary. And imagine insulin. This is our little key, right? I'm just going to draw one key. Boop, 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 right, little key. But we have all this insulin floating around all over the place, okay? Boop, boop. Boop, boop. So insulin is the key that allows us to open the door. Okay, so we'll have our, uh, I'll use black again. We have our glucose, right? I'm just going to put GLU, GLU. We have all this glucose floating around all over here, okay? Just all around the cell. So like I said, insulin is the key that allows that glucose to enter the cell. Does that make sense? Everyone tracking so far. Okay, so type 1 diabetes, our issue is, is that the pancreas does not form enough insulin, okay? Or maybe not forming any insulin at all, right? Type 1 diabetes is genetic, congenital, and you can get it um, at a young age, it can even stretch into your 40s that you can develop type 1 diabetes. Okay, depends on if you've got the history, you've got the genes for it. So if we're thinking of our key analogy here, right, if they're hypoglycemic, they don't have enough sugar, right, or excuse me, let's, let's, let me start that over. They're type 1 diabetic, they don't have enough insulin, so what are they going to have a hard time with? Uh, if we're thinking that. Getting glucose into the cell, right? You have to have insulin to get glucose into the cells. <coughs> All right. So without insulin, glucose cannot enter the cell, and the cell cannot produce energy. Okay. So <coughs> usually, onset usually happens with childhood to your 40s. Um, you can discover diabetics for the first time. I had that um, opportunity, I guess you could phrase it. It was not, didn't feel like an opportunity in the moment, but it was a three-year-old who I got there, wasn't acting right. Mom's like, she's just been lethargic. Now, let's think to our BG, right? If we give B, uh, people a BG, we have to poke their finger, right? Well, little kids, small fingers, right? So with little kids, you're gonna poke their heel. I probably poked this poor girl's heel. Granted, this was total from like, transport from like almost star to downtown, because Luke's downtown takes all our pediatrics. Um, I probably poked her six or seven times in the heel. But when I poked her the first time, she had a low BG. I was like, cool, well, there's no way I'm going to get her to drink this oral glucose. She's three years old. Luckily, mom thought ahead of me and was like, ooh, she has sippy cups. I was like, oh, orange juice. Let's do orange juice. And she was able to drink that juice the entire way. And so I was just monitoring her sugar that way because uh, my next plan was to try and get an IV and get sugar into her via an IV. Um, little kids, small veins, right? So... With her, I was looking at her forehead, because there was a good one there. Um, but I didn't have to, okay? So just keep, be cognizant. If people are acting altered, right, there's two things they get. What are those two things, if they're altered mental status? Blood glucose, Blood glucose and a stroke assessment, right? That was, that's how I started that, that game. I was like, well, she's altered. Let's start with a BG. <laughs> so, so 
onset usually childhood to fourth decade of life, immune system destroys the ability of the pancreas to produce insulin. People who are diabetic, their immune system is destroying their own pancreas, which is why, if we're thinking beta, particularly the beta cells in the pancreas. Okay, so they have to get insulin from an external source. Um, when they first discovered ins insulin, they found it in dogs, and they were pulling insulin from dogs in their blood, and then now they are, they use pigs and they just manufacture it. Well, they did use pigs, and then now, now, it's bacteria. They've gotten bacteria to produce insulin for people. Type 1 diabetics cannot survive without insulin. That's important. Type 1 diabetes, you're thinking insulin, okay? You're thinking not enough insulin. And we'll talk about why that's important when we get to 2, to type 2. So, many people who have type 1 diabetes have an implanted insulin pump. They're really, really cool. Uh, they're in the arm, and a lot of times, they like instead of having to poke their fingers all the time, they'll just take their phone and they'll scan it, and it'll tell them what their blood sugar is. So pay attention. If they have one, then you don't have to stick them. It's usually back here. And it's, it's like a little white patch with like a... Yeah, I've seen little black ones, too. They just look like little dials back there. They'll tell you what they're for. Um, outside of that, if they don't have it, we have to poke their finger, their heel, depending on the size of them. And uh, depending on how nice I feel, maybe I'll let someone poke my finger later. Um, what? Poke the finger. Yes, it is. Okay. Yep, that's how you obtain a BG. Yep. Now, uh, things with our BG monitors, they're very good uh, at what they do, obviously. They're good at finding blood sugars. It's kind of the same thing with SpO2. They can be unreliable from time to time. Like let's say someone was eating ice cream, a diabetic's eating ice cream. As he gets more altered, he's getting stuff on his fingers. And then we have a certain group of first responders. I don't want to say their name because you guys know I'm going to talk shit on them. Um, they're going to show up, firefighters, they're going to show up and they're not going to clean their finger and they're going to poke their finger and they're going to be like, wow, their blood sugar's 500. This person's super altered. They never cleaned the sugar off of their fingers the first time. Okay, so you got to make sure if you're going to poke someone's finger, you're cleaning the site very well every time you do it. Um, reason being too is that I've also had experiences with firefighters who have given people oral glucose and they've just been like shoving it in their mouth and then they get it all over their fingers and then they go to poke a finger, same thing. Well, their sugar is super high. It's like, well, they're at 90. I doubt they're at 400 right now with an oral glucose, right? Um, and we'll talk about oral glucose and some of the downsides in a little bit too. Um, so ask about the pumps, just see if they have them. Okay, so diabetes is uh, the most common metabolic disease, especially for children, okay, type one. And it's gonna be categorized by three big symptoms, polyphagia, polydipsia, and polyuria. What does polyphagia mean? Not, not difficulty, poly, excessive. So when we think excessive swallowing, excessive hunger. Polyphagia means excessive hunger for these people. <clears throat> Polyuria, what is that? Excessive urination, yeah. And then polydipsia, it kind of plays with phagia. What's polydipsia? Excessive thirst, yeah. The three P's of diabetes, polyphagia, polydipsia, polyuria, except excessive hunger, thirst, and urination, okay? That is gonna be the new onset signs if they're constantly hungry, thirsty, and peeing. Then you might notice things like weight loss and fatigue, right? Because they're not getting enough sugar into their cells, so they're not, they're not burning it, they're not utilizing it. So they're gonna start losing weight, okay? Losing weight? Yep. Oh yeah. They'll start, you're basically starving. Okay. So normal BG, right, 80 to 120. When a patient's blood glucose is above normal, the kidney's filtration system becomes overwhelmed and glucose spills into the urine. How they used to test, if someone was a diabetic before they figured out BG, they used to make themselves a little cocktail of diabetic urine and take a little nipper off of it. And it would have a sweetness to it. Yep, they also say that people will have a sweet breath if they're really, really hyperglycemic. It was described to me as juicy fruit, and then I learned in real life that was a lie. Uh, it smells like, uh, you know, when your friend drank all that like berry flavored vodka and then puked? It's that smell. It's kind of sweet, but it smells bad. 
Yep. Okay. So when glucose is unavailable to cells, the body will start burning fat. This is a key differentiator for type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetics will produce ketones. For those of you who have heard of the ketogenic diet, that's kind of the same idea. They're forcing their body to start using ketones. Okay. So if there's no glucose available, if there's not enough sugar for type 1 diabetics, they'll start burning fat. And when they burn fat, that's when they start developing those ketones, and that's when they'll have the sweet breath, the sweet urination. So if you want to really take a, take a nipper off of it, do it in your own time. Um, kidneys cannot maintain our acid-base balance, right? It starts throwing off our pH. And sugar is kind of acidic, right? It's necrotic, it's caustic, otherwise known as. It's, it eats away at things, okay? When people have too much sugar in their body, they will start Kussmaul breathing. This is where this comes into effect. Kussmaul breathing is rapid, deep breathing. They are constantly just <gasps> for, a, and that was even not even deep enough. They are going. The reason being, Right? They have so much sugar, their acid is getting high, right? They're, if we're thinking end tidal, their end tidal would be getting high. And how do we correct a high end tidal? We breathe faster, right? We've got to bring it back down to normal. That's the same idea. The only difference is that with diabetes, the brain does not know why the pH is being thrown off, and it's attributing it to a respirations problem. That's why they start breathing faster, when in reality, it's a metabolic problem, right? Because they have too much sugar but a very common sign with hyperglycemics, okay? So, if a diabetic continues to not get enough sugar, all right, they are going to begin producing ketones. If they continue to produce ketones, they will go into DKA, still type one. They will go into diabetic ketoacidosis, okay? They are in ketoacidosis because they have so many of those ketones floating around their body, it is an acid, okay? <clears throat> so DKA, usually, you'll see coo smalling, they'll complain of abdominal pain, body aches, nausea, vomiting, and they'll probably be pretty altered to the point where they're almost unresponsive, okay? I've ran a few DKA patients who I thought were basically entering a coma. They were so altered, okay? So yeah. No, hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia because the sugar is caustic, and hyperglycemia means they have too much sugar. Right, but then if there's not enough sugar, then they'll develop more ketones, mm -hmm. which will also cause the, it's basically either one. It's a violent cycle, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, if they, if they get too low, the ketones are also caustic, so they'll start breathing those off. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, it's primarily hyper, but I guess with that, yeah, when they enter DKA, that's going to be that caustic still. Any questions so far? Any other questions? This is making sense so far. Type 1 diabetes, insulin problems, DKA associated. Okay. If not recognized, treated DKA can result in death. Okay. Too much sugar is going to throw their body pH off. So you got to get a BG. Now, Generally, for a type 1 diabetic who's in DKA, they're going to have a blood sugar higher than 400, okay? Now, let me get, let you in on the realities of outside world. The outside world, some monitors don't go that high. All it's going to say is high, but it's going to be spelled H-I like a hello, but not friendly like a hello, okay? It can just go into high blood sugar. Okay, let's talk about type 2 diabetes. Now, type 1 diabetes... Yeah, is a uh, genetic thing, right? This affects, it's based on your genetics, your predispositions. Type 2 diabetes, you kind of got to earn, okay? In order to become a type 2 diabetic, that's when obesity starts playing a role, okay? Now, let's think about a normal functioning body, right? Everything's working just fine, and then we decide to just eat and eat and eat and eat. Well, as we eat the sugar, right, our body is able to produce insulin. We're going to make enough insulin to keep up with that sugar, okay? Problem is, is that the people who get morbidly obese, like think like big, big, is that they have so much sugar in their body that the insulin basically becomes useless. 
they develop an insulin resistance. So type one diabetes is a, they don't form insulin. Type two diabetes, they have an insulin resistance. So let's think back to this model here, okay? Um, let me give you an example. Let's say you move into an apartment, right? And your best friend helps you move. So you're like, hey man, take an extra copy of my key here. You know, come over whenever, right? Be a nice guy. Well, then your friend decides, well, I'm gonna take that key and I'm gonna make three copies and I'm gonna give it to my friends. And then they're gonna make three copies and they're gonna give them to their friends. Well, at a certain point, you're gonna have to change your locks, right? Because now everybody has a key to your apartment. Similar idea with type two diabetes. There is so much insulin floating around here now and we're becoming resistant to it that the cells will actually just start taking away doors. They'll just get rid of them, okay? I wish I would have done that with a rag on my finger the whole time. Oop, oop. Just gets rid of all of these doors, okay? And by creating this insulin resistance, now there's just less doors for insulin to get into, right? There's less doors for the insulin to use, so that means our sugar acceptance is gonna get disrupted, right? Because if we can't get sugar into the cells, we're not utilizing it. Now, the, the nice thing about type two diabetes is that type two, diabetes, type two diabetes can usually be dealt with by the patient and they can get rid of it. They just have to exercise and change their diet. They gotta drop some pounds, some LBs or kilograms if you're from across the pond, okay? So type two is insulin resistance. Type one is not enough insulin or not enough insulin production. Okay, so type two versus type one. Type one, what is our medication of choice? External. What, what, well, what, let me rephrase that. What medication do type one diabetics need to take? Insulin, insulin right, because they don't have it. Type two diabetics, they have too much insulin. They just can't use it, right? So they will take different meds. They will take a particular medication called metformin. M-E-T-F-O-R-M-I-N. Metformin is a very common medication for type two diabetics. Another one is glipizide, G-L-I-P-I-Z-Y-D-E, glipizide and metformin. You're gonna to wanna to know those two because if you see them on a med list, you can assume they're type two diabetic. Granted, you can look at people and be like, bet that guy's got diabetes, right? But you can confirm it. So how does that trick the body? Basically what it does is it, it, um, it masks insulin, right? So it, it tricks the body into thinking there's not too much insulin, so it starts to lower that resistance threshold. Yep. Okay, so type two, often diagnosed at yearly medical exams from complaints related to high blood sugar if they have recurrent infections, change in vision, and numbness in feet. Type two diabetics will develop neuropathy which is basically their nerves do not work as well. And it'll get to the point where they have no feeling in their feet, really. Hence your, huh? Hence your toe story. Yeah, I had that patient who literally ripped off his toe. He, th he just thought he stubbed it two days prior. And he was so big, he couldn't see his toes. So type two is when they start just like taking limbs off? When they start what? Taking Basically, yeah, uncontrolled. Well, that's all diabetes, but type two is the big one because they just start, they keep eating all the sugar and sugar will start to destroy everything in the hand. They, it's kind of like the way if you think of shunting, right? Like how the, the body moves blood to protect the core. It's the same idea. They're starting to shunt blood to the important organs to make sure the important organs are fed and then they'll start losing fingers, feet, toes, um, all sorts. And then changes in vision, very common. Uh, but recurrent infection. So there was a, I can't remember who ran it, but there was a scenario uh, on Friday where the guy was a diabetic. Does this sound familiar to anybody? Anybody who had this call or this scenario? The guy was a diabetic and they were saying that he'd been sick and he ended up being hypoglycemic. The thing about diabetes is that infection, like if someone's sick, it can really throw their blood sugar way out of whack. And it's kind of easy if we think, if we really break it down thought-wise, right? If they're sick, their bodies are utilizing all of that extra energy to produce fevers, right? To kill the bad stuff. They're, they're pulling sugar. So a lot of times their sugar can take weird nosedives if they're sick on top of it. Okay, so symptomatic hyperglycemia. This is going to be effective, or this is going to be, yeah, um, for both of them, okay? 
So when their blood sugar is really high, over 120. Now let's think about that for a moment too. If you see 130 on a blood sugar, are you that worried? No, that's not that off normal, right? Now if we start seeing like 200, I'm gonna start being concerned. It's, it's more, it's very common. Like if I was to, if someone eats a donut right there, in fact, maybe that's what we'll do. I'll poke my finger at lunch and then I'll eat a donut and then we'll poke my finger again and you guys can see that blood sugar spike. For science, for science reasons, yeah. I'm eating a donut for science. I'm really sacrificing myself for you guys. Um, but it, it's not uncommon for just food to spike normal people's blood sugar up pretty high. Um, so don't, if you just see, you know, above 120 but not quite 200, I wouldn't sweat it, okay? Now, type one versus type two, there's a difference, right? We know type ones, they will become uh, non keto or excuse me, they'll enter DKA, right? Diabetic ketoacidosis if they get too high or too low. A, a type two diabetic will develop what is called HHNS, hyperglycemic, hyperosmolar, non-ketotic syndrome hyperglycemic, hyperosmolar, non-ketotic syndrome, HHNS. You're gonna wanna know that. DKA is going to be type one. HHNS is type two, okay? And when they're talking hyperosmolar, they're talking about the amount of fluid, okay? Um, basically, your cells can become hypo or hyper Osmolar, it just depends on what's around them. If they're hyperosmolar, that means there's more sugar around the cell than within the cell, and those cells tend to crumple a little bit. Versus hypoosmolar, there's more stuff inside of the cell more, versus what's surrounding it, so that cell is gonna be big. Think of like a, uh, a plump tick, right? When they drink all that blood, they get really big. That's a hypoosmolar. So they'll become hyperosmolar. Their cells will get smaller, okay? And they do not produce, <coughs> produce ketones, right? They don't start burning fat. Their problem is they have too much insulin. They're resistant to what they have. Does that make sense? Type 1, DKA. Type 2, HHNS. It's a very easy way to break that down. Type 1, genetic. Type 2, you got to earn it. Okay. Now, in an individual, if an individual, oh my God, if an individual has hyperglycemia glycemia for a protracted length of time, a decent amount of time, consequences of diabetes may present wounds that do not heal. Okay. I, we kind of talked about gangrene. They will have wounds that will not heal. You will run on people who are scheduled to have limbs cut off because their wounds are not healing. Okay. They'll have that neuropathy, the numbness in hands and feet. They can start to destroy their vision, okay? They can start having blindness develop because the sugar is caustic in their eyes. There's a lot of circulating blood sugar through their brain and through their eyes. The eyes are a weak structure for the most part. And then they may have issues pooping. They can start having bowel obstructions. Uh, weird side tangent, did you guys know that your body doesn't know you have eyeballs? and that if you ever got any of the internal jelly into your blood system, your immune system would start killing your eyeballs. I don't know, I just found that to be a horror fact. So don't pop your eyeball on your head. <clears throat> okay, so type two, when blood glucose levels are not controlled, they will go to HHNS, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic non-ketotic syndrome. Okay, they will be high blood sugar, they're probably gonna be uh, altered. Okay, they're gonna be a little confused might be drowsy or lethargic. They're gonna have that uh, severe dehydration, that thirst, right, that polydipsia. And if they are not drinking water, they're gonna have that really dark urine. And that urine is gonna be because, the reason it's so dark is because they're excreting excess sugar, okay? Now let's think about the kidneys for just a moment. If we're excreting excess sugar, are they working harder, you think? Probably, right? And sugar, as we know, is necrotizing caustic, it's like an acid to the tissues and cells, okay? You can do some real damage to your kidneys with uncontrolled blood sugar. <clears throat> like, for an example of, like, of how caustic, how ne necrotizing this stuff is, if I gave someone an IV and I was gonna give them sugar through their vein, if I, my vein, or excuse me, if my IV was bad at all, it was leaking, 
and I pushed a bunch of sugar in, I could literally kill all of the tissue that that sugar touches. It'll start turning black, become necrotic, and die. It is very, very caustic, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Visual sensory deficits, right? We know neuropathy, they might lose their vision. They can have partial paralysis, weakness, and then seizures. Partial paralysis, weakness, what does that kind of sound like neurologically? Stroke, right? That's why every altered patient gets a stroke assessment and a blood glucose taken. So we don't miss anything, okay? Okay, the higher glucose levels in the blood cause the excretion of glucose in the urine, right? I kind of talked about it. They're gonna have that increased fluid intake. They're gonna try and drink more water because they're always thirsty, but they can just never catch up with the amount of sugar they have, okay? But by drinking all that water and attempts to do it, they're gonna be peeing a lot too, okay? That dark, concentrated urine. If you wanna give a sniff to it, give a sniff to it. Um, I will not be, but you can, I guess. Patient may become un uh, unconscious or have a seizure activity due to severe dehydration, right? We have to be hydrated because hydration also feeds into our plasma, right? The liquid part of our blood. If you're really dehydrated, you start getting like kind of sludgy blood, okay? Symptomatic hypo, any questions on hyperglycemia? Which one do type ones go into? DKA, type two? HHNS. You're gonna wanna know those. Type one DKA, type two HHNS. Type one insulin production problem, type two insulin resistance problem. Very easy to categorize them, okay? <clears throat> A patient's blood glucose level can drop very swiftly, okay? You can burn through your sugar levels pretty quick. We kind of talked about it on Friday when we talked about seizures, right? They can burn through all that sugar really quick. Well, if they're having issues maintaining sugar uh, homeostasis in their body, right, they can start running into, or they'll start plummeting down very quickly just with day-to-day -day activity. So can occur in patients who inject insulin or use oral medications to stimulate pancreas to produce more insulin. Now, um, those are questions we need to ask, right? Think, start thinking of, towards your assessment. You're dispatched to a hypoglycemic. Let's start asking questions. When's the last time you ate, right? Now, normally last oral intake on samples, not that important. Diabetics is very important. When's the last time you ate? Was it an hour ago or was it six hours ago when you were a diabetic? Next question is, when do you take your insulin? Like, oh, well, I didn't eat this morning, but I was gonna go have a big lunch, so I took my insulin and then they got uh, hypoglycemic on the way there. That's very common. A lot of hypoglycemics are in the morning. Um, and it can really throw stuff off. In fact, in STAR a few months back, um, April, March, April, right in there, uh, there was a guy who got pit maneuvered by the police. You guys know what that is when he, they hit the back? And it, <laughs> he was a hypoglycemic. Turned out he had a sugar of 15. They gave him more sugar and then he got to get sent home. How often do people who get pit maneuvered go home? Never. They usually go to their new home, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, it can really throw it out of whack, okay? That's, so that's what they determined. He, he had no other. Well, he had a he had a BG at like fifteen, and so then you'll get pretty altered. Um, I got another story about altered. So when I was in my clinicals, uh, I ran a, a call on a lady, old little old lady, hypoglycemic, known diabetic. They've been very very familiar with her, and they're like, "Hey, we know her. Go make her a peanut butter sandwich." And I was like, "Cool, I can do that." So I make her a sandwich, and I walk over to this sweet old lady, and I was like. Here you go, ma'am, here's your sandwich. It'll help with your blood sugar, it'll make you feel better. And she decided to slap it right out of my hands and then give me a, a verbal talking to that I don't think I've recovered from. Um, and then we finally got her to eat the sandwich and she was the nicest lady I've ever met in my life. Okay, so it really can throw people out, like into a weird mental state. Okay, so just keep that in mind, BG stroke assessments. So. When insulin levels remain high, glucose is rapidly taken out of the blood, right? Because more of it is going into the cells. If glucose levels fall, there may be insufficient amounts to supply the brain, right? Because we need insulin to, um, or excuse me, we need the glucose to get to our brain. If we don't have enough, our brain's going to start burning on nothing, right? Running on fumes, if you will. So if they have too much insulin, their blood sugar is going to be high. If their blood sugar is too high, that's going to affect their thought processes. Make sense? Everyone there? Tracking? 
Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Their mental status will decline, more than likely, the more hypoglycemic they become. They can get aggressive and do some weird stuff too. I've had wake-ups where the people are like crawling on the floor on the ground making weird sounds. I'm like, what's going on here? And they're like, known diabetic. Oh, okay, cool. They do, they do have a short temper though, or short fuse, some of them. So keep that in mind. Just keep yourself safe out there. Uh, hypoglycemics are the ones that we want to check for any weaponry or anything around them too, because we don't know. And then also when we knock on doors, we always knock on doors from here, okay? That way if they shoot through a door, they're not gonna kill you. And then the, the, if they stay hypoglycemic, they continue to not get enough sugar into their brain, they will go unconscious, their brain uh, nerves, excuse me, brain cells will start to die, okay? Because they don't have the sugar they need to stay alive. Okay, so common reasons for low BG, Correct dose of insulin with a change of routine, right? If someone used to take it after every meal, but then they get a new job and they have to eat at different times, that could throw them off. Um, they give themselves too much insulin. There's also such a thing as fast acting and short acting insulin. They can give themselves the wrong type of insulin, right? If they give themselves a slow acting insulin that's supposed to just work throughout the day, but they make a mistake and give themselves fast working insulin, they can just cut their sugar down really quickly, okay? Um, they have to make sure they eat if they give insulin, right? We want to make sure we're asking lots of good questions. When's the last time you ate? When's the last time you took your insulin? Do those things correlate? Okay. And then the last one, correct dose of insulin and the patient developed an acute illness. Like I said, being sick throws your blood sugars way off, right? If they're sick and they're attributing more energy, more of that glucose towards fighting the infection, they, uh, and they give themselves insulin, they can start to actually throw their levels down. Okay, so very common. If you see a sick person who's a diabetic, look at that sugar. <sighs> Signs and symptoms, normal to shallow respirations. If they're hyperglycemic, type one, what are they gonna go into uh, respiration-wise? Kussmaul's, very good. Yeah, they're gonna start breathing really fast, really rapid. Uh, pale, moist, diaphoretic, pale, cool, diaphoretic, dizziness, headache, rapid pulse normal to low blood pressure. All of those vital signs, all of these signs could be a number of things, right? What's our big sign when we're talking diabetes that we can check? Blood our blood glucose. Yep, 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 yep. Okay, so some more altered mental status, anxious or combative behavior. It's all affecting frontal lobe, right? Conscious thought, seizure, fainting, coma, weakness on one side of the body, rapid changes in mental status. Every altered patient, I'm gonna say it again for the 1200th time, BG, Cincinnati Stroke Assessment. We gotta rule stuff out. Because a lot of times BGs will look like a stroke, and if you correct it, a lot of times they will fix themselves, okay? Now let's say someone looks like they're having a stroke, you check their blood sugar and it's 20, and you correct their sugar, it's now 110. They still look like they're having a stroke, they're probably having a stroke now, right? We can rule things out. Okay, so hypoglycemia is quickly reversed by giving patient glucose, oral glucose. Now without that glucose, patient can sustain permanent brain damage. Here's the thing with oral glucose. It is, it, it is what is known as a simple sugar, okay, monosaccharide. They will burn through that sugar really, really quick. It is not gonna be an end-all, fix-all, be-all. So our answer to that is complex carbohydrates because they take longer to break down and they produce more glucose. So that's why you will be making sandwiches, lots and lots of sandwiches for diabetics. You're gonna wake them up with oral glucose. They're gonna say, oh, I don't know what happened. You're like, hey, eat this sandwich. And they'll eat the sandwich and then their, their sugar can maintain. Now, a lot of hypoglycemics, they end up not being a transport, right? If they, there's on, well, at least, once again, I can only speak towards Ada County. At Ada County, we have a specific kind of sheet that we use for diabetic wake-ups. And there's a list of things. Is there a reason they missed their, or is there a reason they went low? Did they eat meals per normal? What was, do we have a definable cause as to what happened? And there's a whole long list. You're gonna have to, if you want to leave people there on a hypoglycemic wake up, especially cause it's kind of like seizures, right? If they're a known hypoglycemic and this has happened to them from time to time, they know what the problem is. They're not gonna need to go to the hospital and be told, hey, you've got diabetes. They already know that, right? So. Um, keep that in mind, there, whenever you guys get to wherever you are, your career is, they'll probably have some sort of protocol for diabetic wake-ups. Will there be like bread in the ambulance or do you just 
go to their pantry. No, nah, dude, I raid people's pantries. You get to be nosy. I'm looking in people's medicine cabinets under their bed. You get to find all the deep, dark, juicy secrets. I love that. No, yeah, we, I use the stuff they have. Make their food. Okay, scene size up. Not a whole lot really changes outside of if they're altered, we know it's a hypoglycemic, potentially altered patient. Head on a swivel a little bit more, okay? Because we know, shush. Um, we know that they can just get a little bit hairy from time to time, right? Potentially aggressive. Yeah. I have an off topic question when you were talking about knocking on the door. A lot of like the funny videos I see on like social media mm -hmm. of paramedics, mm -hmm. they just like walk right into the house. You don't do that. So. What? Walk into people's houses? Right oh, I walked into a lot of people's houses. Uh, okay. Yeah, like if the door was open, I would just walk in. I'd be like, hey, paramedics, as I'm walking in the door. But yeah, dude, I just walked in. It's, that's like a fun side effect of this job is you're super comfortable walking into strangers' houses. It's pretty fun. Like last time I went to buy something off Craigslist, Craigslist with my dad, the lady's like, come on in. And he's like, mm. I'm like, okay, what's, what's inside, you know? <laughs> like, let's look around. I'm gonna look at your family pictures now. I'm gonna judge you. Yeah, no, you, it's, you just walk right in, man. Uh, airway, breathing, circulation. So if they're a hyperglycemic, right? Coo smalling respirations. Uh, not sweet, fruity breath, vodka vomit breath. Sweet vodka vomit breath is what you will get, okay? If they're hypoglycemic, it's usually normal, if anything, shallow, okay? Uh, circulation, dry, warm is hyperglycemia. Moist, pale, hypoglycemia, okay? <clears throat> Rapid, weak pulse. Da, 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 da. So, transport decision. And here, every scenario you run is gonna be a transport, okay? After we uh, have adjusted the hypoglycemia, we fix the problem, okay? And we're gonna further check, um, well, okay, let's talk about oral glucose right here. There are people who can't, we cannot give oral glucose to. They're unconscious. They have to be conscious. They have to be able to protect their own airway. We do not just put oral glucose into an unconscious person's mouth, okay, why? Airway obstruction, right? Potential airway obstruction. And we are not in the business of making our own lives harder. Okay. Good. Good, good, good. Uh, investigate chief complaint. Talk to family. Uh, they're going to be a good, good source, especially if you go to someone's house. You know, is this, do they normally act this way when their blood sugar gets low? Okay. Do you know when they took their insulin? Do you know the last time they ate? You need to get details. And if the patient is super altered, you're not going to be able to get it from them. Okay. So ask lots of good questions to bystanders. <clears throat> Sample, do you take insulin or pills? If they take insulin, they're what kind of diabetic? If they take pills, they're what kind of diabetic? Type, one. Type two, if they take pills. Insulin, if they, you, you jumped in late. Do you wear an insulin pump, right? Is there, can, I, can you check that BG? There's a girl in my medic class, she's a, currently a medic with Ada County. She had one of the insulin pumps and I didn't know what it was for a long time and it kind of looked like a Zune, like those old school Zunes. And I was like, damn, she's like committed to holding on to this one. And I thought that for like a good six months before. I was like, what is that? She's like, oh, for diabetes. It's like, oh, so not cool tunes, okay. Um, yeah, so ask lots of good questions, okay? If you're taking your insulin, if you eat normally, had any illnesses or an unusual amount of activity, right? Because illnesses are going to throw their blood sugars off if they're diabetics. And if they're moving a lot, right, they're exercising, they're really active, they're burning sugars that way. Okay, so ask lots of good questions around it. Secondary, probably not a good reason to do a head-to-toe unless they're unconscious, right? Or unless they, you know, passed out and hurt themselves because of their hypoglycemia or they had a, a lapse of consciousness because of that. Outside of that... Not a whole lot to palpate, right, on a hypoglycemic. Can't feel the pancreas. Vital signs, going to be checking. Glucometer is the big one. You guys carry them all. Uh, reassess frequently. So let's talk about BG and our assessments for a moment. It is a vital sign. When you get your first set of vital signs, you want to get everything, BG included, okay? You don't want to miss stuff. Get everything you possibly can. Now let's say, oh, I found they're a hypoglycemic. Okay, we gave them oral glucose. If you give them oral glucose, if you do something to correct a sugar, if you do anything that you can check the results of, do it. So if it's a hypoglycemic, on our second set of vitals, we're checking one more blood sugar, right? Let's see if that's back to normal. Um, yeah. Okay, interventions, we're gonna to have to do 
I, uh, no, whoa, PO oral glucose, right? You guys cannot do IV glue, uh, yeah, you can't do D50. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Document everything. Okay, so emergency medical care. We give them oral glucose, right? There's three types, the gel, tablets, and the liquid. We will use the gel. Patients often will carry tablets, glucose tablets. If they have their own tablets and they prefer to eat a tablet, do it that way. Okay, um, use what they know. Oral, so oral, blah, blah, blah. oral glucose, contraindications, inability to swallow or unconscious, okay? Obviously wear gloves before putting it on and try not to touch where you're going to be checking a BG on, okay? And it's not uncommon on diabetics to check a BG three, four times in a call. It is not unheard of, okay? And the reassess frequently depending on the patient. Uh, so if they have seizures, we're just maintaining airway, right? Nothing really changes from our conversation on Friday. Are we finally getting hurricane rain or what? I can hear it. Sorry. Sorry I distract everybody. Um, make sure the airway is clear. Left side, okay? Making sure they're not, if they seize, they're not slamming their head in anything, not putting anything in their mouth. Have suction available on the off chance they vomit while they're seizing, okay? Transport promptly. Oxygen for breathing problems. Altered mental status, um, spend time, I'm not gonna go over it right now, but go over AEIOU tips that will help find uh, why people are altered, okay? I guess I can go through it. The A stands for alcohol, the E stands for epilepsy, the I stands for insulin, the O stands for overdose, the U stands for uremia, U-R-E-M-I-A. The T stands for toxins. The I stands for infection. And the P, or the P stands for psychosis. And the S stands for seizures. Alcohol, epilepsy, insulin, overdose, uremia, uremia uh, toxins or trauma, toxins slash trauma, insulin, psychosis, psych uh, and stroke. No, infection. infection. Insulin infection. And they're kind of interchangeable in there because there's two eyes. I would spend time, be familiar with it. Um, it's, it's definitely one that is actually really applicable in real life. When you get out there, like this dude's altered, what's going on? Let's just start running down the list, see if we can find anything. A lot of times it's obvious, but if it's not. Psychosis. Psychosis. Psychosis and stroke is the last one. Okay. Um, and then T, like I said, was toxin slash trauma, like head injuries. Okay, so always high, altered patients, they're gonna get a BG and a Cincinnati, okay? If they're altered, airways clear, be prepared to suction, prompt transport, right? Misdiagnosis of a neurologic dysfunction, just gonna treat symptoms, transport. There's not a whole lot of changes, right? There's not a whole lot of involvement, I guess I would say, unless it's a hypoglycemic, right? But even then, we're giving them sugar. If that doesn't work, we're going, right? Um, diabetic people can be confined by police. It is not uncommon either for you guys to be called to um, police scenes or, you know, police-related calls just to check a blood sugar. It's very common. Is this alcohol or is this a blood sugar? I check a blood sugar, well, that's fine. Cool, he's going to jail now, right? They, they'll call you just to rule things out because they can't do it. And diabetes and alcoholism can coexist. They can be the same person. So what do you think they're, if they are, uh, if an alcoholic is a diabetic, what do you think their sugar is going to be like? High, right? Because alcohol is nothing but sugar. <clears throat> uh, yep, yeah, okay. So airway management, oh yeah. Mm, I mean, I bet you could, but realistically, it's probably the type one that's playing the bigger role. Um, type one diabetics, type one diabetics don't normally get really big, right? I mean, they can get a little floof, but they're not going to be like type two. Yeah, yeah. And they'll, uh, I forgot to mention, I did talk about it kind of, I glanced over it. Um, oh my God, I just left my head. 
That's gone. It'll come back later, I hope. Um, oh, oh, yeah. So when it comes to, yeah, see, I knew it would come back. Uh, when it comes to, like, getting their blood sugars checked to become a type 2 diabetic, like, when they're, have anyone ever heard the term, like, pre-diabetic, like, family members are pre-diabetic? What they're checking is what's called their H, uh, H1C, which is just an average of their blood sugar over like three months. That's how they keep track and that's how they diagnose diabetics. Um, yeah? Is the average person's blood sugar ever abnormally low? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh. Like until you eat in the morning? Yeah. Um, there, so let's talk about this real quick too because this one irritates me when I'm out there. There'll be, you'll run into people who are like, oh, I'm a hypoglycemic. That's not a thing. Like, that's a, that's a symptom, right? That's not a disease. But they just haven't eaten, and then when they eat, they feel better, right? Your blood sugar can start to drop if you haven't eaten, which just makes sense. Like, normal, naturally, that happens. Um, so yeah, your blood sugar can drop. Now, it's not gonna get, like, insanely low. You can still manage, like, you'll probably keep it at the lowest, like, 70, which is, even then, if I saw 75 on a BG, I'd be like, well, that's low, but it's not that low, right? That's very overcomable. Um, but you will run into that from time to time. Uh, okay, so hematology. Any questions on diabetes? Type 1, DKA, Kussmalls. Type 2, HHNC. Type 1, insulin production problem. Type 2, insulin resistance. HHNS. I learned HHNC instead of it being syndrome, it was coma. But yeah, HHNS, HHNC. I guess HHNS would go into HHNC. Mm -hmm.